Few fireworks displays are more spectacular than the drama that is steelmaking. The story of hot metal and cold steel is fascinating from start to finish, especially when seen through the experienced eyes of United States Steel. For our company, the story begins with a blast. As rock explodes and the raw materials of steel are tossed from the earth, the rock is taconite and the prize inside is crude iron ore. We get at it by grinding the rock to powder and separating the ore with powerful magnets. Then we form and heat the ore into marble-sized pellets that will later be converted to iron. From bituminous coal, we create coke to fuel the iron-making furnaces. We crush the coal, seal it in airtight ovens, bake for 12 to 16 hours, and remove it from the oven as solid carbon fuel. The fuel and pellets come together in the blast furnace, where we add just enough limestone to remove impurities. From below, a continuous blast of superheated air combusts the coke, intensifying the heat and changing raw materials into molten iron. Sometimes more than 9,000 tons of it a day in our largest blast furnace, where it reaches a temperature of 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. At regular intervals, we tap this blistering brew into giant submarine ladles that ride on rails to the basic oxygen shop, where iron will be turned into steel. In this fast-paced sequence, up to 250 tons of steel can be made to order in less than 45 minutes. We begin the steel making process by dumping recycled steel scrap into the basic oxygen furnace and adding hot iron. Sparks steal the show when high purity oxygen is blown into the mix at supersonic speeds and molten iron becomes molten steel. Now we're ready to create the custom blends that make steel the most widely used metal on the planet. In fact, we produce over 1,500 different chemistries to meet customer demand for cutting-edge, value-added steel. Look for another show of sparks as we tap molten steel from the bop vessel into a ladle. Then, for most of our steels, it's on to the vacuum degasser, where they are made highly formable. The focus then shifts to forming and finishing, which determine even more of the steel's characteristics. The first step in this sequence is to position the ladle above a massive tundish or funnel that feeds a continuous caster containing molds that shape the steel. The molten steel, now at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, is channeled from ladle to tundish to caster, where it cools to a red-hot solid. The shape of the mold determines the shape of the semi-finished products that come out of the caster. And since most U.S. steel plants make sheet products, most of our casters output slabs, typically eight to nine inches thick and three to five feet wide. As they exit the caster, slabs are cut into sections up to 40 feet long and stacked to await further processing. Then it's on to the hot strip mill. This is where we begin transforming steel slab into steel sheet. Slabs are reheated to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit and descaled before running through a series of roughing stands that make them thinner and longer. Then they cycle through finishing stands where they are rolled even thinner. Finally, they are cooled and rolled into coils that may be thousands of feet long but only fractions of an inch thick. A far cry from the chunky rectangle that came out of the caster. And the entire process is untouched by human hands, controlled instead by operators using state-of-the-art automated equipment in pulpits that overlook the action. Next, we move to the pickle line, where coils move through an acid bath that cleans the surface. 
Some of the emerging coils are shipped directly to customers as hot band. Others are destined for applications that require special finishing, beginning with cold rolling to make them even thinner. At that point, coils may be shipped or go on to one or more additional finishing processes. Coating to make the steel resistant to corrosion. Tinning to further reduce the gauge and add the tin coat we commonly see on canned goods. Annealing to make steel that is easier to bend and form. And tempering that uses special rollers to add hardness and create surface textures and other special finishes. In fact, many of our products leave the finishing facilities as the industry's newest superstars. Lighter, stronger, highly engineered, formable steels that were unheard of just a few short years ago. No wonder the story of steel making stays so fresh, with innovations that guarantee something new to see in each showing with product placements in our homes and high-rises, on our highways and in every other part of our daily lives, and with a cast of thousands who continue to improve and perfect every step of the steel-making process, from shaped pellet to shipped coil and beyond. <laughs>